So tomorrow, February 3rd, we have a big update being revealed for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. This is going to be revealed on IGN, so keep an eye on that tomorrow for the update news. Now, while this tweet doesn't specify exactly what the update will be, most likely the second free DLC character reveal will happen and potentially more. I talked in length about what we could see in my last Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl video, so rather than repeat all that here, if you're interested in what data mines, developer interviews, and the general speculation is pointing to that might show up in tomorrow's update, go check out that video. Voice acting, better online, crossplay, extra stages, there's a lot of cool stuff we might hear about tomorrow. I'll just say, as for which character we could see, for a long time now, all signs have pointed to Shredder being our second free DLC character. It seems Garfield and Shredder just missed the cut for base game, so very likely we finally will see Shredder tomorrow. Now, like I said, this is being called a big update. So as I discussed in that past video, there's lots of other things beyond Shredder we could see tomorrow. It's entirely possible we could see a further DLC character revealed as well, or even the amount of further DLC fighters to expect, or even how they will be sold to us. Maybe something like a fighter's pass, the way Super Smash Brothers sold its DLC characters. So on the eve of potentially the last chance to speculate wildly about the DLC, I thought it would be a fun idea to discuss what the roster for this game could look like by the end. So let's jump right into this. First off, we do not know how many DLC fighters there will be after our second free DLC character. Again, likely to be Shredder. How many we might see likely hinges on how much of an added budget Nintendo gave the devs. That figure is of course completely unknowable to the general public, so not much help there. But there are two places we could use to take a stab at a potential final roster count. The game's roster itself, and the official website for the game. By looking at what the maximum amount of characters that can fit on these two character lineups, we might be able to get a rough idea of how many fighters they might be shooting for. Now mind you, this is very speculative, so disclaimer warning here. Simply seeing how many places could fit definitely does not mean that's how many brawlers we will see. The website has changed around plenty of times and could change again. And so can the look of the roster. And as Super Smash Bros. has taught us time and time again, a perfectly squared off roster is not necessarily what we'll see in the end. But nonetheless, with nothing else to go off of, let's see what numbers we get anyway. So looking at the roster itself, after hypothetically we get Shredder added in tomorrow, the roster could hold 10 more icons after that. Now again, it could be resized or not evenly distributed by the end, but 10 further DLC brawlers appears to be the maximum amount without any resizing done. Looking at the website for the game, right now if Shredder gets added, that would leave 8 more spots for further DLC characters. Alright, so 8 to 10 characters is not guaranteed, but that's the best rough estimate we have with what we can go off of here. Honestly, that would be an amazing amount of DLC. I'd be very happy if we truly did end up getting about 8 to 10 more fighters. Okay, so while I called this video a prediction video, I think it's going to be more half predictions and half fun speculation. Just discussing what might fill up this DLC and how the devs might approach adding characters. It's of course very tough to guess exactly who we'll get, but discussing lots and lots of possibilities is pretty fun and we might predict a fighter or two in the process. Alright, so if we really do get Shredder tomorrow, here's what our roster would look like. I'm going to add 10 more spots. A very optimistic number, but it falls into that 8 to 10 more fighter range. Getting 8 more fighters would be incredible, I'm not even really banking on getting 8 more, but 10 is the biggest maximum number the roster could hold without resizing the icons. And like I said, I want to use this video to discuss the possibilities, so the more potential brawlers, the more we can discuss. So the first DLC character after Garfield, and probably Shredder, that I think we might see is Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. With the data mines for the game, we saw that a Succomatic item has been updated between base game and Garfield's release. It's now a fully rendered item, and it comes from Rocco's Modern Life. Also, Diego from Fair Play Labs said on a stream that they wanted to make sure to get Rocco into the game. And we also had a long list of voice files announcing characters not on the roster. Likely those were just recorded to keep the roster unknown even to the announcer, but characters from Rocco's Modern Life were on that list. So it seems like the devs had the series in mind at one point. So Rocco, I think, is the most likely further DLC fighter. Whether he's our first character we see, I don't know, but I suspect before all this is over, we will see Rocco, or at least a character from Rocco's Modern Life, on the roster. Now, circling back to that list of names that were recorded by the announcer, there's one other Nicktoon series that had a character on that list, and that was Jimmy Neutron. 
So considering Rocco's Modern Life and Jimmy Neutron are the two series not in the game yet, but through data mines we know do have some representation within the code of the game, it seems very likely to me that the two series were at one point in development considered. So I'm assuming those are the two series most likely to get a further DLC character. I'm using Jimmy Neutron and Rocco on the roster here, but any Jimmy Neutron character could work, or any Rocco character could work. I know Hugh Neutron has a bit of a fan following for this game, though personally I think Jimmy with all of his inventions and his robot dog Goddard makes for the best moveset potential and series rep. Next up is a fan favorite, Jenny Wakeman, or XJ9, from My Life as a Teenage Robot. She won a fan poll that we know the devs are aware of, and with such a unique potential moveset as a robot girl, she'd be very cool to see get in this game. We also found out there isn't any legal issue with using Frederator Studio characters like Jenny. Plus, Rep, a developer of the game, tweeted this out suggesting maybe Jenny is being worked on for the game, and they are making sure to get her renders, height, and proportions correct. All right, next up, we're going to move somewhat away from prediction territory and more wishful thinking. So I'm adding Timmy Turner from Fairly Odd Parents. Now, Timmy might have some hurdles to jump in order to actually get into this game, supposedly because the company Nelvana is the international distributor for Fairly Odd Parents. Apparently, that might make it difficult to actually add him in for legal reasons. However, since Fairly Odd Parents was once one of Nickelodeon's biggest Nicktoons, I simply can't exclude him here. For like a decade or more, Nickelodeon was basically the SpongeBob and Fairly Odd Parents network. A ton of people from a certain age group remember that era of Nickelodeon, and to not have Timmy in a Nickelodeon All Star game is odd to say the least. Now, if we only got four more fighters, this is the lineup I'd want. We get the most popular classic Nicktoon we are missing, Rocco, and then we get solid characters from a very underrepresented early 2000s era of Nickelodeon, Timmy, Jimmy, and Jenny. Legit, that whole time period only really has like Danny and Zim on the roster right now. Arguably Avatar as well, but with 90s Nicktoons so prominent here, I think the DLC could be used to even things out a bit. In my opinion, adding these four helps the series and time period representation for Nicktoons a lot, and would make the game feel much more complete as a Nickelodeon All-Stars lineup. So I think these are the most crucial elements for the DLC. Okay, so with that said, there are a few different approaches for what else we could get, and what else we probably should get to finish up the game's roster. Since all of these DLC fighters I've discussed are characters from currently unrepresented series, let's continue down that road as one approach to the DLC might be to add in as many further Nicktoon series to the game as possible. So what is the next most popular Nicktoon series we don't have yet in the game? Well, sadly, I'd say it's probably Doug. Doug was one of the original first Nicktoons premiering right alongside Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy. While Doug isn't much of a fighter, his alter ego Quail Man would make a great character for this game. But sadly, Doug is no longer owned by Nickelodeon. Doug was bought by Disney many, many years ago, and continued as the less popular Disney's Doug series. Although I think Nick has the rights to the original run of episodes, they generally don't use Doug in merchandise and other things like video games. So although Doug would definitely be my next character choice, I don't think he's actually a possibility. He's sort of this game's version of Banjo or Sora, kind of a mixture of both, honestly bought by another company like Banjo, and owned by Disney like Sora. And I don't think a Disney compromise miracle is happening again for this game like it did for Smash, sadly. All right, so what other unrepresented Nicktoon shows are out there? Here are some of the more major ones that come to mind. While I could see some very cool moveset potential in any of these characters, I think once we get this deep into unrepresented and more obscure Nicktoon series, we have to keep in mind that this DLC has to sell. So if a series isn't very well known or popular enough to the general public to sell, it likely won't have much of a chance to get a DLC character. So I think to find out which of these series might sell best, we need to look at which of these series Nickelodeon still tends to think is marketable. I'd say only Angry Beavers and Rocket Power still get merchandise. They tend to be sold alongside other 90s Nick nostalgia stuff, which is popular right now. Between Angry Beavers and Rocket Power, it's a close call, but I think Angry Beavers just barely wins out as the series that's a bit more well-known and popular. Again, just basing that on how much merchandise Nickelodeon banks on selling that's out there these days for those series. So let's add Dag and Norb to our roster. Now, a duo fighter like Ren and Stimpy would be cool, getting both of the beavers here, but if the character had to be a single fighter, I'd say Daggett probably is the better choice between the two over Norbert. 
Well, I've given myself five more spots, so let's just add in rocket power as well. I'm using auto here, but there's a lot of potential rocket power character options. Tito or Squid might be the better meme choice, and this game hasn't shied away from meme characters like Nigel Thornberry. However, I think the real draw to adding a rocket power character would be their moveset potential. Doing extreme sports as their attacks would make for a very cool fighter. Tito, while the biggest meme character from the show, only ever surfs, as far as I'm aware, and Sam was known for beefing it all the time, so probably one of the two Rocket siblings would rep the series best and allow for a moveset potential full of skateboarding, surfing, rollerblading, biking, snowboarding, you name it. There's a lot to pull from there. I made an icon for Otto here, but if you like Reggie better, that's fine too, and honestly she'd add a little bit more of female representation to the DLC, so choose your pick. Now I think those are the only old Nick shows that might possibly be considered to sell well enough to make it in as DLC. While there are other characters and shows I'd love to see in this game, I'm wary of anything more obscure being seen as marketable enough for a DLC fighter. In fact, even Angry Beavers and Rocket Power might be pushing it a bit, and there is an alternate approach to what kind of DLC fighters we might get. So far, I've been talking about adding unrepresented series and expanding which shows are actually in the game. And while I do expect at least some new Nicktoon shows to end up on here after the DLC, a good chunk of the DLC might actually be further characters from shows already represented in the game. For instance, we pretty much know our next DLC character is likely Shredder, a character from an already represented series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. With Shredder added, that would mean TMNT has four characters in the game, more than any other series, clearly making it among, if not the most, popular series here. Since Shredder was meant to be base game, the base game roster would have actually had TMNT with the most fighters. So on some level, TMNT is being seen as the biggest show in this game. So maybe more TMNT characters could also be seen as popular enough to sell very well for DLC. It's very odd to have a video game where Raphael and Donatello aren't playable while Leo and Mikey are. So maybe instead of dipping into more obscure 90s Nicktoons, they'll simply opt to complete the Turtle lineup. Again, that's a ton of fighters for one series though. It already seems the plan from the start was for TMNT to have the most reps with four, since Shredder was likely cut from base game. Tough call if Raph and Don are too much TMNT or not. Do keep in mind if each character shows up with a stage alongside with them, that would be Shredder, Raph, and Don adding three more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stages. So maybe both turtles would actually be a bit much to do for DLC. But there are some other already represented Nicktoon series that could get more fighters instead of TMNT getting more. Rugrats was once Nickelodeon's most popular show. Before Spongebob came along, Rugrats was the face of Nickelodeon. It's most popular series by far. While it's fallen off a bit in popularity from those days, and its association as The Nick Show isn't the same as it used to be, I think that title clearly goes to Spongebob now, Rugrats still once was the king of Nicktoons. And the series has gotten a reboot recently, so it's both a 90s nostalgia thing and a current Nickelodeon thing. Yet looking at the roster, we only have Reptar, not even any of the babies. Maybe they want to stray away from violence with toddlers here, I'm not sure, but if that isn't a rule for this game, Rugrats is sorely underrepresented. I think these three are our potential options realistically. Tommy, Chucky, or Angelica. Chucky might be too much of a scaredy cat to be in a fighting game though, and since Tommy Pickles was once Nickelodeon's Spongebob, he's got a good case to be made that it should be him in this game. Angelica might have the better moveset potential though, and being slightly older might help if there really is some issue with having the babies fight. She'd at least appear somewhat closer in age to the Loud House characters. Alright, so how about instead of Raph and Don, since that would put TMNT at double the number of fighters to the next most repped series Spongebob, we split the difference between going deeper into underrepresented Nicktoons and adding a character from already represented popular series, but one that's poorly represented currently, Rugrats. So here we'd get Angry Beavers and a Rugrats character. I went with Tommy here. But honestly, I think him or Angelica are both solid options. Heck, even both Tommy and Angelica getting in and upping the Rugrats to three fighters right there with Spongebob might honestly make sense to do over adding more obscure Nicktoons. Or another option could be to do both Angry Beavers and Rocket Power 
and buff up the Rugrats lineup with one character. Now circling back to TMNT for a second here, it's worth noting that if all the leaks and data mines are true, Shredder wasn't meant to be DLC initially. So although we will have already gotten a TMNT DLC character, that wasn't the original plan at all. So maybe with TMNT being such a popular series, they'd still think it's one of the best candidates to sell as a DLC fighter. While completing the Turtles is something I'd like to see, Raph is my favorite turtle after all, taking up two DLC spots is a bit much, especially after Shredder was bumped to DLC as well. So maybe TMNT could get a single for their DLC fighter. I don't think it would make sense to leave out only one of the Turtles though, but there is another character that might have been on the devs' minds at one point. There's a portrait for Rocksteady in the game's code. The only other portraits were for Garfield and Shredder. I personally think Rocksteady might have been an idea for like a potential boss if having bosses was ever considered, or maybe they were deciding between either Rocksteady or Shredder and ultimately decided on Shredder. But whatever the case, we do have some evidence Rocksteady might have been at one time considered for this game. So maybe DLC will have the devs realizing whatever ideas they might have had for him. Maybe he could even be both Rocksteady and Bebop in a single fighter. We have alternate costumes for the characters, and while that would be a drastic change, changing from Bebop to Rocksteady, Rocksteady to Bebop, it would be a cool way to get two fighters into one spot. So we could try to go with all of these options. A more obscure, yet to be represented Nicktoon series like Angry Beavers, a single DLC fighter from the most popular and highly represented series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Rocksteady, and a fighter from an already represented, but underrepresented presented series, Rugrats, with someone like Angelica. Personally, I'm a little more wary of Rocksteady actually becoming a brawler, or even TMNT getting more DLC fighters after Shredder, so let's take it back a step, and go for the most representation with Angry Beavers, Rocket Power, and bumping up the representation for Rugrats. Now, if Shredder is indeed the next DLC fighter, and he very likely is, that puts Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as the series with the most characters. I think most people would argue SpongeBob should have the most characters in a Nickelodeon All-Star game. So even with three fighters currently, you could make the same argument I made for Rugrats that SpongeBob is actually going to be underrepresented right now, and should at least tie for the most fighters. Squidward has had a few odd interactions with the developers when people have brought up the character. And I'd argue Squidward is probably the third main character of the series, and we don't have him yet. We also don't have the Krusty Krab as a stage yet, or Patrick, Squidward, and Spongebob's houses as a stage. And both of those seem like obvious Spongebob stage ideas. I think Spongebob is very likely to get another fighter, and my guess would be Squidward. Spongebob is honestly so popular, and would probably certainly sell some DLC, I could see it getting two DLC characters even. I already just suggested two different stages that could work, and I think Mr. Krabs would be next after Squidward if Spongebob got another DLC character. This would put Spongebob at the highest fighter count, and honestly, that might be how a Nickelodeon game should be. Continuing with the biggest, most popular series getting DLC, Avatar is a huge franchise, and is still incredibly popular today. We have characters from three of the four nations, so let's add in a firebender with Zuko. Zuko seems like the obvious choice if Avatar got another rep. Awesome moveset potential, and completes the four nations. Okay, so we've hit our 10 count limit, and I have to say, this right here would be a very cool roster. Not even sure we'd get this many characters, of course, but if we had to drop down to eight instead of 10, I'd sadly say realistically, Timmy might not make it for legal reasons. And maybe you'd have to cut a more obscure Nicktoon out, like Rocket Power or Angry Beavers. Or maybe cut one of the two Spongebob characters and have the series just tie TMNT for the most reps and not have more than it. If we get told the full number of how many DLC fighters we should be expecting for this game, and it's less than 10, then we could have a better idea of who among these probably won't actually make the cut. If the website lineup is right, and it's actually eight more fighters, I'd probably predict we'd get something like this. Four new series, and four already repped series getting more fighters. Nice and balanced. Going back to the 10 more DLC fighters roster, we could balance it out the same way too dropping Rocket Power in favor of two Rugrats reps. So we have five new shows and five already rep shows getting more characters. Or instead of Tommy, we could get a single further TMNT character like Rocksteady, which would end the game with SpongeBob and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tying for the most characters, both series ending with five fighters. Or since Shredder was meant to be base game and thus TMNT was already meant to have the most fighters, we could drop Angry Beavers and add both missing turtles, ending TMNT once again in first place with the most fighters at six. Though that would again likely mean adding a lot of further TMNT stages, and I don't even know if they'd be able to think up enough stages for that. 
Personally, I like getting as many Nicktoons into the game as possible myself. And if we impose a rule that each series can only get one more DLC fighter, so SpongeBob would only get one more, maybe we'd have to drop Mr. Krabs for someone like Rocksteady. Honestly, Mr. Krabs is like a potential main for me, I really like him, but I just think realistically, if there was only one more SpongeBob rep, it'd be Squidward over Mr. Krabs. If we are going total wish list roster, I'd start to get real weird. I'd probably, instead of Rocksteady, switch out Mr. Krabs and go with Dib. But that's just me being an Invader Zim fanboy. I just really like Invader Zim and would like to see more. Either that or add some Nick Jr. representation. Or my personal top pick, Stick Stickly. That is if live action is off the table and you don't count Stick Stickly as live action. I should probably mention there has been some talk about Goku as Hungrybox I think mentioned it, but honestly the same way I feel about Goku getting into Smash, I feel about Goku getting into Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I think there's enough fighting games out there you can play as Goku and enough Dragon Ball Z games that I really don't see him associated with Nickelodeon even if Dragon Ball Kai technically I guess was on Nick at some point. So personally I'd rather not see him. All right, well, that's a ton of potential options. I'm excited to see what we get tomorrow. I assume Shredder, but potentially more stuff as well. And maybe we'll even have a better idea at how many or who we might see as DLC, either after a data mine once Shredder gets added, or maybe they'll actually reveal another further DLC character or at least give us the full amount we should expect, something like a fighter's pass. Whatever the case, I'm excited to see whatever we get. And I'll likely make another predictions video at some point if we really do get a better idea of what further DLC for this game might look like. Well, I hope you guys are excited for whatever we get from IGN tomorrow. How many fighters do you think we'll get by the end, and who would you like to see get into this game? If you have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Gino's a Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord.